Very good afternoon, everyone present. I see some visitors from CIC, welcome, and also operations here. So uh, it's a great privilege for me to introduce Father Rayaka Kasi from Bello Diocese. He's a diocese priest who is very much involved with the environment. Just a brief uh, conversation with him that um, he was already into environment even before La Plata Sea came out. So basically you can say that Pope Francis is giving a stamp of rule on the work he has already started. So without further uh, delay, I'd like to introduce Father. Uh, welcome Father. I, uh, so good afternoon Father Christopher and good afternoon everyone present here. Very nice to see so many Novas. You remember last time when planet Earth was in absolute danger, only one old man, God called him, and one man was enough. And he saved, he built a boat, and he saved all the species of plants and animals which we enjoy today one man effort. But here I see many Novas here. Mrs. Novas also involved and uh, some youngsters here, younger Novas. So it's a big crowd, crowded Novas. This boat is very crowded, I think. So I think this time we are not going to let this planet uh, destroy. No, we are going to bring back I mean, after all, we made mistake and we realize it is uh, something, uh, it's a learning experience. Humans are young species and it is a time that we are trying to learn to walk. That is the stage we are in. So when you are trying to walk, I mean, <laughs> you have your own share of falling down. So that is what we have been doing. So just, uh, I want to tell you and tell human species, grow up. That is what I want to tell you, grow up. So now that to see simple messages, grow up. Leave behind all that, uh, all that uh, childish ways and come on, come to maturity. As St. Paul would say, when I was a child, I was behaving like a child. When I became an adult, I behave like an adult. So that is what we are. We are moving towards our adulthood. I am glad to observe this sign here. Now, love to see this in Norway. Actually, I am glad to see you added me, in uh, uh, Because many people, they were on the Lao Lao Pussy. Pope Francis gave the title Lao Lao Pussy short. Uh, there is no, Mi Signore is missing. That is my Lord. Mi Signore. So why don't you say all of you Lao Lao Pussy? This time Lao Lao Pussy, Mi Signore. Lao Lao Pussy, Mi Signore. 800 years ago, St. Francis of Assisi wrote this sentence. Before his death, two years before his death, he penned this sentence. And this poem is so famous, every Italian in the school, every kid has to learn this poem. It is a uh, Italian uh, literature, literature. So such a simple poem. He wrote for the you know the five elements of the earth? Uh, soil, water, air, fire, and ether. So the five basic elements of the earth. So, uh, praise be to you, my Lord. Care for our common home, only one home. That's a papal words. On the cover of the book, he writes care for our common 
home. In other words, we don't have another home. If you destroy this home, that's it. There is no other home for us. Not only that, we are sharing this home with other creatures. That is the wrong way I am putting it. Actually, creatures are sharing their home with us. That is that, because they came before us. So, we need to thank all other creatures for accepting us. We are the last human, uh, sorry, last living creature to appear in the great chain of beings. So we are the little brother and we are the little sister. There is no little brother after us. Nothing came. We are the last one. And we are not allowing other creatures to come after us. That is arrogance. So, St. Francis of Assisi put it, this is a family, large family. He puts it cosmic family. You know our family, father, mother, grandfather, grandchildren, daughter and son, this is our family. But what Francis of Assisi is showing is a larger family that is, I would call, cosmic family, in which father, that is our father, father, our father, he is the father, he is the head of our family, and all of us are his children, not only humans, soil, water, air, and fire, and ether, and microscopic bacteria, the visible and the invisible, you would have heard in the mass, the letter to the Colossians today, the second reading, he talks about Christ is the firstborn of all creation and visible and invisible things came through him. In other words, the living and the non-living components, because the whole natural world is made up of only two things, living and the non-living. From the non-living, living came. That's what the Bible says. God took the soil and he breathed and man became a being. So from the non-living matter, the living component came. So before us only non-living. It was existing stones, soil, sunlight, temperature, water, mountains, deserts, really no life. So this is what the basic thing you should understand the living and the non-living components. So, St. Francis of Assisi is writing a poem for them. Are you ready now? He says, his poem is titled, The Canticle of the Sun, or The Canticle of the Creatures. Two titles. Canticle of the Sun, or Canticle of the Creatures. So, in which he calls son, brother son. Brother son. He is the big brother of all in our family. Without him, there is no food, there is no life, there is no warmth. He is the breadwinner for all creatures and he makes food for all our family. So, brother son. Then he puts it, Sister Moon. See, Brother Sun, Sister Moon, Brother Wind. Brother Wind. Ah, without Brother Wind, we can't sit down here. We need wind. We need every breath depends on the wind. It's a Brother Wind. And Brother Fire. Brother Fire. And sister water, sister water. Anyway, by the way, is there any water for me here? Sister water? I need some sister water, David. Otherwise, I'm going to choke now. <coughs> Better get the sister back. Yeah. So sister water. And then he gives two titles to soil and the land and mother earth. He says, Mother and Sister Earth. 
mother and sister. Two, two, two titles. Thank you, David. So, two titles he gives to mother. At last, he says, sister death. In the same kind of sister death. Now you imagine, we are all 150 years old, every one of us. And we try to stand up when we can't stand up. And we try to eat nothing like this. And uh, you can't even sleep. Your eyesight is so dim. And you don't smell anything. And you can't do anything at all and you are depressed. And uh, imagine, in this condition, you have to live another 500 years. Another 500 years. Imagine. Would you like that? Nobody would like that. That is the time you call sister death. <laughs> oh, my sister. Please, why don't you come and take me? Take me, please. Liberation. Actually, Sister Death is coming and take you to the deeper realm of life. Actually, what we are living, this is a shallow life. Wife, children, what, uh, what is that, grandma, grandpa, uncles and aunts. Shallow, very shallow. This relationship, they won't last. Sometimes there is betrayal, you know that. Uh, we feel hurt uh, in our relationships. So it's not perfect in this life. But sister death introduces to a, a better life where there is no pain, no suffering, no mourning, no cheating, no lying. And of course, we are going to, Sister Death is going to introduce to a relationship which is going to be more beautiful and permanent, everlasting, that is God. So when you have God as your relation, then why do you look for uh, these relationships like friends, wives, children? Because God himself is now you are having. So when you have God with us, you don't require everything. Everything becomes meaningless. So that is the realm where Sister Death is taking us. That's why Francis as he puts it. Sister Death and also he was becoming blind. He was 47 years old. St. Francis of Assisi, he didn't eat food. The food what we ate, he was putting ashes inside and he was eating. He spoiled his own health, his eyes, his organs. Everything is spoiled because he was not eating, making mortification. So I think he really suffering at this point. So he was inviting Sister Death. Sister Death, come and take me. <coughs> I began to imitate Sir Francis of Assisi in my seminary days. So I was not wearing chapels, and then I was going simple walking like Francis of Assisi, and then I got sickness of the feet, you know, like gangrene or something. And then I went to the hospital. The hospital bills cost so expensive. The rector called me and told, you better, you should immediately renounce the Franciscan spirituality. It costs so much money for the seminary. <laughs> <laughs> Your spirituality is so expensive to the seminary. <laughs> that is the end of my uh, spirituality, Franciscan spirituality. But I call myself Raya Pakasi. But when I come here, I call myself Raya Pakasi C. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> when I go to elsewhere, I go to Muslim brethren also to give talks on environmental uh, conservation. I tell them I am Raya Pakasi. So I change here and there, little bit, and I belong to the whole universe anyway. All right, so this is what the interaction I gave you. Common home, this home for everybody, to the mosquito, to a venomous snake, and for the 
holy people and also obnoxious creatures. We call them obnoxious. We hate them. So we share in the same home. The obnoxious creature probably living to your next room. Yeah. So such a closely knitted uh, uh, creation. So we are all brothers and sisters. You should remember that. Where is my remote? Yeah, I am having remote. All these gadgets we need in order to uh, make ourselves comfortable. All the encyclicals. There are about 24 encyclical scopes are written so far. Every encyclical follows this model. See there? This is the model. You can solve your problems. Individual, parish level, family level, national level, international level. So this is how every encyclical. Every encyclical, like uh, more is the Thesia, there are so many uh, Evangelii Gaudium, Lumen Fidei, uh, Laudato Si, Sente Simusano, there are so many encyclical. All of them are following only this model. See, judge, act. That's it. This is how you solve all your problems. See, judge, act. So, here, there are six chapters in Laudato Si. First two chapters, see. The third and fourth chapter, judge. Fifth and sixth chapter, act. Alright? The first chapter is titled, What is happening to our common home? This is the title. What is happening to our common home? Pope Francis is inviting 7.5 billion people on the planet. Open your eyes and see the planet. See the living and the non-living components. See the mountains, see the oceans, see the soil, see the atmosphere. See the forest, see the biodiversity, see the issue of water, see the waste, pollution. See the quality of life. So this is the thing what see. First of all you are seeing. You see up, you see down, you see in front, you see at the back, you see on the right and you see on the left. Every 360 degree turn. You see. See Pope Francis' reaction. This is what the reaction. Oh my God. Oh. Say laudato si. Laudato si. Laudato si. Alright, it looks like charismatic meeting. Say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So like laudato si. That's good, that's good. Praise the Lord. That is the same meaning. Now we are upgraded. Uh, to Latin and uh, I think you are PhD now. Everybody is PhD. Alright, this is the uh, uh, what is it, methodology and also this is the content in the first chapter. So if you capture, I'm going to give you a feeling of Laudato Si today. I promise you within 2 hours and 30 minutes you're going to be Really, I promise, doctors, PhD in love doctors. I promise. Yeah, you believe me. Two and a half hours, you are all doctors of love doctors. So, listen me carefully, all right? See, first he starts off with the pollution. Pollution. I think this is, uh, all right, just a second. I thought the pointer is here. Is that a pointer here? So, all right. Okay. First talks about pollution, then climate change. We have changed the climate. 
within 100 years, we increased the temperature 0.85 degrees. That means one degree Celsius within the short span of 100 years. For the past 10,000 years, it was constant, no rays, constant. But suddenly for the past 100 years, one degree up. And it's rising, it's not falling, it's rising. So that is the thing, changes the planet. And then waste, how much waste we have produced, and he is writing very uh, funny way in one place in the first chapter. Humans have, every one of them have BA, bachelor's degree, master's degree, and PhD degree in creating waste. <laughs> Humans are experts in creating waste. That is what they have specialized so far. But it is a funny way of writing. It's a satire, but you need to think about it. All right? So here, we are throwing out everything on the planet. At last, we are throwing out human beings also as useless. When they get old, you are a throw away. And the poor, you are a throw away. And the sick, throw away. So, the throw away culture considers even human beings are a race. Why they should live when they get older, let them disappear. So this is what Pope is writing. And uh, uh, the throw away culture, not only human throw away, food throw away. is writing the people, those who throw away food, are stealing from the table of the poor. Poor people, table, we are stealing the food. When you throw food away, when you waste food away, you are stealing poor people's food. So, very strong writing. Then comes climate as a common good. This is a common good planet. It's not for human good alone. So far we have been thinking in terms of human progress, human development, Human future, only human. Human redemption and human salvation. But we never thought in terms of the well-being of the whole planet. That is the misunderstanding even today we are having. Mahatma Gandhi, in 1905, he used a word called Sarvodaya. Sarva means everything. Udaya means welfare. Welfare of all upliftment of all from the soil to human that should be flourishing everything should flourish so humans can flourish if everything soil quality is gone i think humans can never flourish so many civilizations went into oblivion because of the loss of soil soil erosion in fact, Theodore Roosevelt, the American president, he puts it so beautifully in a quote, a nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. A nation that destroys its soil destroys itself. So that tells you, soil is for the common good. It is not for human self-interest to make big bricks and put them and seal them. So we have taken the good soil. We are talking about arable soil. There is only six inch of soil on the planet's surface. One inch, it takes 10,000 years for nature to make one inch of soil on the planet's surface. 60,000 years, six inch of soil. And you are taking three inches of soil for brick making. And it is lost. When you dig soil, arable soil, from the top soil, when you put seeds, nothing grows. There is no microscopic bacteria underneath because the living soil contains so much of humus and the microorganisms. Actually, microorganisms keep soil healthy. If there are no microorganisms, it's called sand. Sand is not living. Soil is living. 
So that is the difference here. So everything is for the common good. The water is for the common good for every creature. The water, what you drink and you excrete, the snake is also drinking the same water. The dinosaurs drank the same water. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, they drank the same water. And the air you breathe, the same animals, they breathe dinosaur and exhale, inhale. Snakes exhale, inhale. And Jesus and Mary also and we are. Everything goes inside and comes outside. There is no discrimination there. The same elements. That is the common good. So today, common good is at stake because we work for the self-interest. You know what? Pope is writing in one place, while all the creatures on the planet work for the common good of the planet, why only one species work for self-interest? I wonder, I don't know what species is that. I don't understand. Please help me understand. Which species is that? I don't know. While all species work for common good of the planet, only one species work for the self-interest. That is Homo sapiens. That is us. That is us. There was a mother fish teaching swimming lessons to a baby fish. Baby was learning swimming. Baby was so happy. Asked the mother, mother, mom, what is all this? The mom told, this is ocean, our home, ocean. And then baby jumped for joy and then suddenly he saw the mountain and the land. Oh, what is that mom? Then the mom told, that is land. Then, anybody living there? Then the mother told, this is ocean, fish live here, that is land. Selfishly <laughs> Such a wisdom from the mouth of the fish. So much wisdom we could have had it, but we have eaten them all. <laughs> so much wisdom was eaten by humans. Such a beautiful planet. Everything works for the common, except one species. When comes the issue of water, Malaysians, you may not understand the gravity, uh, the seriousness of the uh, water problem. But I come from India and Chennai is the hot spot. It's the ground zero for that problem. Yes. People wait four or five hours for one pot of water, which costs 300 rupees, almost uh, 20 ringgits for a pot of water, uh, 300 rupees they pay, and then, uh, uh, what is that? They wait for four hours. 